On today's episode, I'm going to dive into this topic of digital products and online business. And we're going to talk about if you missed the boat on starting your digital business, or is there still time? And I'll talk about how to figure out what your digital product could be about or help you get more clarity on if what you decided is a good fit. So if you're building a business online and if you're leveraging digital products like courses, membership sites, workshops, or you're thinking about it, then this is the right place to be. You're listening to the Badass is the New Black podcast. I'm Chrissy Chin, your host here to teach you how to build an online business that you love and in a way that allows you to work a little bit less so you can enjoy a whole lot more. My hope is that you've showed up to today's episode ready to learn something new and will be inspired to take imperfect action in your business right away. I won't make you wait any longer. Let's dive in. Today is a solo episode with just me, the one and only Chrissy Chen, and I've been doing a lot of interviews and wanted to just come chat with you about this topic, you know, where it is, where it's going and help you with your business. So we're going to dive into this digital product space and we're going to talk about it. Is it too late for you to start a business with digital products? Well, let's get right to it. So 2020 was just the catalyst, I believe, to sending more people online. Things will, let's be honest, they'll never go back to being the exact same as they were before. And, you know, there's a reason for that. Even more people were forced to go online. They were forced out of their office. um, And now they have this kind of new understanding of online. People were forced to learn more tech by getting online and using these platforms to continue to communicate, whether it was with people who um, were in their their company, their business, their industry, or just communicating with people and, and continuing to network with people. If they weren't doing it online before, they were really kind of forced to do that. And so things will never go back to being the same because once you have knowledge on something, then you do things differently or you have more uh, you know, possibilities in your future. So just the sheer fact that so many people, and I don't have the stats and it doesn't really matter, but you know, so many people got online and are doing more online. They'll, they'll continue to do things online. You know, just think about how many people had never used a virtual conference platform before spring of 2020. So many people. Now everybody knows what Zoom is and Zoom has definitely grown on that branding ladder where if you want to meet virtually with someone, you say like, hey, let's Zoom. Even if you you end up, you're going to be on Skype or Google Hangout or someplace else, you just kind of say like, hey, let's Zoom. It's kind of like, hey, yeah, just Google. Well, there's lots of search engines, but you say Google. So that's what I mean by they've um, upped themselves on that branding ladder. I talked with that, um, with Michelle in another podcast episode where she talks about her book, Exit Rich. I talk about that. But so now you just say like, hey, yeah, let's Zoom. And really you could meet any virtual way. But Zoom is that thing. I'm recording here on Zoom right now. Um, And Zoom is the acceptable way of meeting people. It could be the acceptable way of meeting one-on-one or in a group or in a workshop or a masterclass with your students. It doesn't feel like a foreign thing anymore. So these platforms are more acceptable, which just means that you know, digital, going digital, being online, this is just the beginning more people were forced out of their jobs. They're needing to find other means to bring in income. And so instead of going back to school, they are turning to online for education. I mean, I truly believe you can literally learn anything that you want on the internet for free. You can go to YouTube, you can search, you can listen to podcast episodes. You can learn how to do a skill, a trade, a craft, uh, you know, get better at things online. But of course, you invest in things or people invest in things like courses or membership sites to get more guidance, to maybe get that specific process that they want. So just because you can get everything online for free and learn everything doesn't mean that you shouldn't create a course or a membership site or have a workshop. 
also people like to learn from different people or, re- or people that they resonate from. So someone might be searching for something on YouTube and they're like, finding that person's voice so annoying or how they talk so annoying. And then they find you and they're like, oh yes, I'm totally vibing with Chrissy. I love her energy, her kind of relaxed energy where she's just like kind of anything goes and we get to do what we want here. Like this is our business and this is our life. Right. And so they'll resonate with you. Um, that being said, you know, everything being online, not only could you create something to sell, but also you can learn how to do it online. You know, if you want to build a brand online to grow your business, that foundational piece, you have no idea, you can purchase my course, build a blissful business, right? So there's lots of things that you can tap into to get the education that you need to learn that next skill. You're here right now listening to this podcast to learn more. And so other people will want to learn what you have, the knowledge that you have. And so getting that into a digital product, your knowledge into a digital product, 100%, I think is a good option for you and your business. E-learning is expected to reach, you know, 300, I think it was like $325 billion industry by 2025. And, you know, That number is just crazy to think about that much money being spent on digital learning. And so my question to you is, do you want your business to be in that space and you be grabbing, reaching out into the air and grabbing a part of that $300 billion or not? Do you want to be in the industry or not? So you might think, well, gosh, 20 spring of 2020, that was a whole year ago. There's been people that jumped on this opportunity a year ago when they were kind of forced to, and now I'm starting to explore it. Or I was dragging my feet a little, and I've had this idea for a course or a membership site for forever, and I haven't really done much with it. So now I'm a year behind, but I want you to know that this digital space it's just getting started and it has grown tremendously over the last 10 years. And it's going to grow tremendously over the next 10 years or just until 2025, four years from now, $300 billion. So what type of digital product are you going to create this year? And what will you create it on? I have a really awesome worksheet and a guide that will help you figure out you know, what knowledge you have in your brain right now, you don't even have to go learn any new things about what you're going to teach. You have knowledge already that you could turn into a digital product online and generate a profit. So I have a worksheet and a guide that's going to help you identify what that is, what your digital product could be about. If you go to thechrissychin.com forward slash profit, you will be able to get that free worksheet and guide. Okay. If you have already have an idea, you're like, Chrissy, I've already got this idea. I already know what I want to teach on. I already know that I love finance or helping people get out of debt or eating better or working out or, you know, whatever it is, marketing, leveraging video, whatever it is, you already have this idea. You can use this worksheet and guide to maybe bring you even more clarity to what you could offer. I want you to think about the lifestyle that you want to create. This is a huge, and, and my private clients that I work with, this is something we focus on tremendously. You've heard me talk about it before. If you're following me on social media or you're listening to podcast episodes, we talk about the lifestyle that you want to have in the future. What does it look like a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now? Do you want to be working 40 hours a week? Do you want to be working 10 hours a week? What do you want? I don't care if it looks different than what I want. It will look different than what I want, but I want you to be mindful about what you're doing now to ensure that you're creating this lifestyle that you want. How much time do you have to invest in it now? You're like, oh, a year from now, I want to be, um, you know, my business is just creating passive income and I'm not doing anything. I'm, you know, maybe spending three hours a week in my business but I only have 10 minutes a week to invest in it. Well, 
well, it's likely not going to happen in a year, right? So knowing realistically, how much time do you have now to invest? Can you grab a little bit more of your time now and invest it now to build something great so that you can get to that lifestyle you want a little bit quicker, maybe in six months, maybe in one year? How much time do you want to be spending each week working on your digital business? So not only how much time do you have, how much time do you want to have? If you only have 30 minutes a day, but you really would like to spend an hour a day, again, where can you find some little pieces that you can eliminate? Okay, instead of taking that nap, no one out there is taking a nap. I'm not even taking naps anymore. You guys, I used to be taking naps. Now with homeschool and all of this stuff, I'm not taking naps. Next year, when I send the kids back to school, I'm definitely taking more naps. That was the thing I used to do. You know, so anyway, how can you get some more time back in your day? How can you be efficient in something else um, so that you can get a little bit more time to focus on your business now? Of course, the more time that you spend up front, the quicker that you're going to get it done. Uh, you know, but you can just make progress with 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day. And that is better than nothing, 100%. If you're not doing anything because you're thinking, I don't have the time to create it, you are the person that is going to find yourself a year from now saying, shoot, I wish I would have started my business or focused on my business a year ago when I listened to Chrissy's podcast episode. Maybe you were that person in spring of 2020 and now you're at that point and you're like, oh, I said I didn't have the time to do it or I was just busy with other things. And now I really wish I would have started. Well, guess what? We don't have to live with regret. We can learn from that and we can say, all right, you know what? I might not have all the time in the world, but I can dedicate 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, you know, Monday through Friday or Monday through Thursday or Tuesday through Thursday and just focus on getting this idea worked out and built out and online so that I can sell it. Think about the knowledge that you already have and could teach someone else or what you are already teaching. I'm going to go through like tons of different examples to kind of just give you thoughts and ideas on this. Maybe you are a financial advisor and you charge a lot to do work one-on-one -on -one with people, right? But there's definitely things that you can teach kind of the masses, maybe someone who can't afford your one-on-one -on -one service with financial advising. Maybe there's generalized tips and tricks that you can teach people what you do for your clients, what they can do for themselves. And so maybe you create a course on finance. Maybe you have worked your way out of loads of debt and you want to teach others how to do that. I know someone who's creating this course right now. It doesn't matter that Dave Ramsey is out there and teaches how to get out of debt. Maybe you've heard that name. He's huge in the, in the debt space. Maybe you haven't. But, but you probably have a different process. Maybe you did his course and you realize this was not, this didn't work for me. And I really needed to do it this way. And you got yourself out of loads of debt. And so you want to teach your perspective. You want to teach your process. And trust me, there will be people out there that will resonate with you. Maybe you've lost 60 pounds through intermittent fasting. And so you want to teach others how to do that as well. You have the knowledge, you have the process. You can think back, how did I do this? How was I successful? What did I struggle with in the past? Why did this time make a difference? And you can teach that to someone. Maybe you love marketing. Maybe you work in marketing at your corporate job. And so you have loads of experience. Maybe you did or didn't go to school for marketing, but that's what you're working in now. That's what you've learned about. And so you know a ton. Maybe you're a great storyteller. Maybe people are always telling you, oh my gosh, you tell such amazing stories. Or people are always captivated by you. Maybe you teach other people how to do that. And sometimes you don't think you have this skill. Maybe other people have told you that you're, gosh, you're really good at listening. People have told me that before. You're really good at listening. And so I never thought about teaching people how to be a good listener, but because I, because it comes, I guess I would say it kind of comes naturally to me, or I've just learned the skills to be able to, to listen well. But if I really think about it, while it seems so simple and natural to me, 
other people may not understand. And so if I can think about the process or what I'm doing when I'm listening, then I can teach someone else how to be a good listener. So things that come natural to you, things that you're already doing, you may think that no one needs your advice or, or knowledge or to teach them how to do it, but not everyone can do it how you do it or the way that you do it. And so you can take that knowledge and you can teach them your process, teach them your tips and tricks in it. Uh, maybe you're like Jack from one of my previous last week's episode who was a model. He was behind the camera for years professionally. And now he teaches, he was kind of forced into this realm through the pandemic, through projects being shut down. And so he's like, Hey, I'm going to teach business owners how to leverage video. I've been behind the camera for years and that's what people are lacking. They're lacking the confidence and the skill and the knowledge to get on video, but he knows how powerful it is. He knows how important video is. If you're watching on YouTube, comment below, say, yes, I love video right? Maybe you're listening, maybe you're watching. And so he knows how powerful it is. And so he's like, look, I'm going to dedicate my time, a little time every day, and I'm going to build up and and teach people how to do this. And I'm going to teach them for free online. And then I'm going to create a course and they're going to be able to get more access to me and my specific process and learn how to do it. For my friend, David Bianco, shout out to David, friend and private client. You know, he's a successful actor. He is always booking new work and, uh, you know, now that, you know, back in the scene, he's got a lot of, um, bookings. He is creating a course to teach those entering this industry, how to book more auditions and get more roles. So he's taking his years and years of experience in just his industry that he loves. And he doesn't want to leave that industry. I think this is kind of the difference. There's people that hate what they're doing and, um, They want to get out of maybe their nine to five and they want to go digital online and they want more financial freedom and flexibility. So there's those people. Maybe that's you. If that's you, you can comment below and say, yes, that's me. I want to leave what I'm doing. I promise I won't tell your employer. And I want to have my own business for more freedom and flexibility. And then there's the people who love what they're doing. And they're thriving with what they're doing and they have so much knowledge in what they're doing and they want to expand that and help more people do that same thing and be successful in that area. So David loves his acting career. He doesn't want to leave his acting career and just do courses. He wants to continue that and he wants to grow his brand and his business to help more people do the same thing. If that's you, comment below and tell me, I want to take what I'm doing now and just make it more scalable. That's kind of the difference. You know, maybe you're working one-on-one. I have some private clients. I don't take very many. I don't like trading time for money. Maybe you know this about me because I've shared it before. And so the, I love, love, love kind of diving in deep with someone, but it's not scalable. And I know that I was put on this earth to make a difference to the masses, to help thousands upon thousands of people, maybe a million people. We'll find out. But I need to do that in a more scalable way. I can't do that when I'm just working one-on-one with people and maybe you can't either. So I took my knowledge. I mentioned my course before and I took that knowledge that I have, have acquired over the last, you know, 2012, I launched my first LLC. So I don't know, that was nine years ago take my knowledge of the the successes and the failures over those last nine years and how to create a brand. I created a brand and a business that generated a million dollars after 20 months. And I don't say that to brag or boast. I say that so that you know it's possible. Okay. And I learned a lot. We launched that business in 2017. So I learned a lot from 2012 to 2017. It wasn't, you know, raining golden nuggets the day I launched my first LLC, but I kept at it and I kept going. So created, took my knowledge on creating a brand and a business. And I thought about my process, you know, what does it take to really put together a brand and a business that's going to attract the right client 
It's going to bring in the people that you want and it's going to help you sell. All right. I'm going to bundle that up in a course and I'm going to sell it to people. Right. So, so that's what I did. Okay. You could be an artist teaching people, you know, aspiring artists, different techniques, pointillism. I remember my sister in high school, two of my sisters are phenomenal artists. Um, you know, with drawing, I always wanted to be a really good drawer and it just was not a skill that I had, no matter how hard I tried, I could have taken more lessons maybe to learn techniques, but it seemed like for Katie and Claire, it just came more naturally to them. But I remember Katie did pointillism. It's where you can create a whole picture literally with just little dots. And so maybe now that I've said this, maybe you know what, what it is and what you've done. And I remember she did this picture of, um, like a fetus or a baby. I can't quite remember. It was a little, it was a little baby. And it was when you looked at it, like from a little bit farther away, I mean, perfect resemblance, so talented. And then when you got up close, it was these cool, like just all these little dots. Okay. It came a little bit more naturally to her. Maybe she learned some skills through her art teacher, maybe not. But if that was something, if she loved doing pointillism art, she could teach other people the techniques behind that. And it's super specific, but maybe that's what she loved. And so she could teach those techniques online to people who are wanting to learn and expand their art skills through pointillism. I don't even know if that's what it's called. I think that's what it's called. If you're an artist and it's not called that, like don't shun me away. <laughs> I'm not an artist. I'm just like points, pointillism it makes sense. Right. All right. So you could be, let's like go on the same artist artistry line here. You could be skilled in spinning clay or something that you're learning, you know? And so maybe you teach others the techniques that you're learning to spin. Maybe you're addressing the challenges that you're having. Like, oh my gosh, I could not get it to be symmetrical around. And I just figured out that magic tip and trick to like getting it to be symmetrical. And so like, here's the tip. You could be a life coach. Maybe you take what you do with private clients. Again, we've kind of talked about this. Taking what you do one-on-one -on -one with private clients, you turn that into a digital course or a membership site that allows you to teach what you did do one-on-one, -on -one, but now you're scaling that. Now you're able to teach thousands of people at a time versus one. My father-in-law is an amazing chef. He owned restaurants when my husband was a child. And so Michael grew up, you know, in the restaurant industry, George has owned multiple different kinds of restaurants and he cooks for us often. I'm so grateful for him here at the home, but he has so much knowledge about food, about prep, about cooking, about flavors. I mean, if you have a cooking question, you ask grandpa George, you know, how do I cut this meat? Like, I didn't even know there was a thing about like cutting meat. It's like against the muscle, right? So when you bite into it, it just kind of falls apart. I don't even know that. I know nothing about cooking, but I've even learned stuff with George. I try and like stay out of it. I don't want to learn too much because I don't want to be thrown in the kitchen. I let Michael and George do that, but he knows so much. He could record you know, videos on his knowledge, teaching people about these techniques. He could teach, you know, uh, moms and dads at home that now are just eating in a lot more or want to eat in more and cook for themselves. He could teach them how to do that. Or he could teach aspiring chefs what he has learned throughout decades of experience and, and skill that he has created and developed. Last night, he... <laughs> Don't be jealous. Last night he went shopping in the fridge. I was like, I got some salmon. So, you know, we can cook that up. And by we, I meant you, George, Grandpa George could cook that up because I'd probably mess it up. And um, so he was like, we don't have a side dish for it. And so I was like, yeah, okay. Like I could make a lettuce salad or something. It'd be super simple. So then dinner's prepared and there's this beautiful side dish with you know, sliced apples and thinly sliced pineapples and radishes and cucumbers and celery. And he made this dressing. And I was like, like, what is in this? It's like, oh, just mayonnaise and apple cider vinegar and a little sugar. And, and, and these things, he's like, you know, we didn't really have anything. So I just kind of looked in the fridge and whipped something together. Like how many people struggle with that? And he has multiple times just been super creative on, creating something out of the hodgepodge, the one apple, less than a serving of each, the one apple, the one radish left over, you know, the, the quarter of a cucumber. It's 
like not enough for everyone. And he, he just whips it up and makes it delicious. He could take that knowledge that he already has. He doesn't have to learn anything else about that. And he can put it online in a digital product. My mother-in-law teaches Koreans how to speak English better. She does this one-on-one. -on -one. She trades her time for money and she's always booked up. And so now she started a YouTube channel and this to start growing her audience and plans to have, you know, either a course or a group offering. She's still kind of figuring it out, um, but has plans to do that. So she can help people more than just one-on-one. -on -one. She can teach one to many, right? So what are you doing right now? What are you skilled at? And sometimes I've used the word, what are you an expert in? But oftentimes people feel like they're not an expert. But I want to encourage you, if you are three steps ahead of that person, maybe you're an expert in that, that step, right? And someone might only be three steps behind you and that's okay. So even if you feel like you're not an expert in something, what are you doing right now? What are you skilled at? What do you have knowledge in right now? What do you love teaching about that you could teach other people how to do? In the comments, I would love for you to type in and share with me what that is that you're thinking about creating on, or maybe you've already started creating a course. You have plans for a course or a digital, some type of digital product. Put that in the comments, share with me. I want to read what you are going to start your business on or what you have started your business on in this digital space. Go back and listen to any of my interviews that I've done with people on this show and listen again to how they got there. Oftentimes, many times I, you know, say, share with the audience, like, how did you get where you are? Because everyone is like me or I'm like everyone where we went to school for something else and we were in a different industry maybe. And then we kind of brought it online or we had this twist. I was a nurse and now I'm teaching business online. That was like a huge, you know, difference there. Whereas Jack from last week, he was, you know, modeling behind the camera. And now he's teaching other people how to be on camera or David, an actor teaching other people, you know, how to be, you know, better at what they're doing, their craft. So not so far. So I would love to kind of know, like, is this a, you know, something that is just kind of an evolution of what you're doing, or is it like, I'm doing something totally different. And then now I want to do that. So I'd love to know, share in the comments with me. The goal here is that you start build and scale a business that you love one that lights you up, you know, one that you're excited about to wake up every morning to do because entrepreneurship is hard. There, there are hard days. You will have to learn. You, you might know your craft, but you're going to have to learn how to get it online that's what this podcast is here to help you learn how to do that. You know, the things I ever help you learn how to do that. How do I get my website up and running? How do I get it online? Where do I host it? All of those things. You'll have to learn those things. And, and so now I want you to take this information that I've shared with you today. Now that I've got your juices flowing again, maybe you're brand new into this business and you're like, all right, should have done this a year ago, but now is just as good a time as any. It is. That is the truth. Or you are all have already started your business. And now you're like, I'm really ready to like get more serious at this. I'm ready to scale this to six figures, multi six figures, seven figures. So I want you to take this information shared today. I want you to hop onto the web, onto the interwebs, put in the URL, the forward slash profit and download that worksheet and guide that is going to help you identify what that thing might be for you, you know, or it will give you some ideas on how you can, um, you know, get it started in less than three hours a week. So if you've only got 20 minutes a day, because I want to be able to help you make an extra thousand dollars a month, $2,000 a month. That is my goal for you. So that is the worksheet and the guide to get started with. And if you already have that idea, you already know kind of what you're good at. The worksheet is still good. It's going to help kind of bring up some ask you some questions and get you to start thinking about like your ideal life and are there pieces or things that you could be doing that you haven't thought about. Okay. So hop over to the chan.com forward slash profit to download that worksheet and that guide in next week's episode, we will talk about all the different kinds of digital products you could leverage. 
what makes sense for you and your business and how to use them to grow your business to generate more passive income. So things like workshops, masterclasses, digital courses, masterminds, we're going to talk about all of that. Before you go, go subscribe to the podcast so that you're notified when next week's episode comes out so that you don't miss that topic next week. And if you found value in this episode or in any of the others you've listened to, please do me a solid, leave a review on the podcast. I love seeing what you're finding valuable. If you want to connect further with me, you can find me hanging out on Instagram and Facebook. You can shoot me a DM or a PM, the Chrissy Chin. And then my website is thechrissychin.com. So I have taken the tip of make your, your name and social platforms uh, the same across the board. So it's the Chrissy Chin for everything. Just search for that and you'll find me. Can't wait to connect with you in these other places until next week. Remember done is better than perfect. Make imperfect action every single day and you will go far my friend. Until next time, remember done is better than perfect, my friend, and to channel your inner badass and take imperfect action every single day. 